Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to On the Mic with the M and T. So we were talking about relationships. Um, it's different. Uh huh. The dating realm, Much navigating different. is totally different. Uh huh. And I, I don't know. To me, you always, no matter how much it's changed, you have to go back to communication, loyalty, and trust. But that has to be built. You can't trust someone off the off the gate because you don't really know them. You don't know what the game is. You don't know what the agenda is. But there has to be some reality, some truth that you should establish, no matter what, if you just become friends. But at least you have to establish something because if you don't, I, let me let me just take the band-aid off real quick, right? Mm -hmm. How how do we jump in the bed with people who we have no loyalty and no trust with in the dating realm? Where where do we do when when do we say that this was okay? Um because I think we need to talk about that. Yeah. Cause if you're saying that the dating dynamic, right? That whole courtship, so to speak helps to establish trust helps to establish loyalty and everything to create a lasting relationship that should lead to something else um hopefully the end game of marriage um how are we in the bed so early i, I guess <laughs> you know that goes back to i goes back to self mm -hmm. again relationships is just an extension of where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So if you are a person who is, like I said, cracked, sh uh, shattered, then sex doesn't, you don't think of sex as we would think of sex because you're, you're in, there's a need. Okay. There's a need to be loved. Okay. okay. There's a need to, be, to feel connected. Mm -hmm. And whether that means, you know, sleeping with a guy early to say, hey, I'm connected to him. He loves me or, or her feeling of love or her connection to love mm -hmm. um, is, is how you can do it. Now, for a guy, we don't really care, but I would look at you a little differently if all of a sudden I just met you and all of a sudden we sleep in the same day. Okay. Um, because then I'm like, whoa, this ain't the first time he did it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, But you would engage in the access just as easily because it's available? De if depending on the guy, if you if you're in that mode and you want it mm -hmm. and it's available, mm -hmm. you're going to take it. Mm -hmm. Now, will you continue to take it from that person? Who knows? You if it's good, that's going to keep you around. Okay. But now you want you want more because sex ultimately is not going to keep you in a long term relationship because that's a part of the relationship. Mm -hmm. It's about okay, can we have fun together? Can we just sit out and look at trees and just enjoy looking at trees? Can we just enjoy our, ourselves together? Can we just be home and just laugh at each other and enjoy each other's company rather than, oh, we're home and I don't want to talk to her or she don't want to talk to me and I don't know why I'm here. Therein lies the communication thing. You have to learn about each other. And, uh -huh. and that's where you learn trauma. That's where you learn, you know, things you're going through. And if you feel uncomfortable with someone like that, you don't mind having that conversation. But if you think, mm, I mean, I want to mention that to her because I don't really feel that vibe, mm -hmm. then more than likely you probably won't be long term. You may be friends, which won't be bad, but you won't, you won't be going somewhere that you're looking to go to, such as a relationship, marriage, kids, white picket fence. All that I'm gonna just dabble in this round just I don't want to be the bad person but I'm gonna just dabble here just for a little bit we don't have to sit here for long but what how how do we think if the male is our leader right mm -hmm. how does that affect the women or the ladies in our community or our culture our people when the men are okay with engaging in loose sex that they know they have no intent on going anywhere with it it's almost as if you lead on a group of women and kind of lead them there 
who probably were already broken and that's how they probably got mixed up in the shenanigans and now you you know engage in sex because they were broken they allowed it they absolutely did allow it um you weren't gonna stay around for long you knew you weren't you told her everything she wanted to hear and then you jumped ship you didn't carry her you didn't abandon her you you know you let her know that this rodeo has come to an end you you were honest about the situation but what i'm speaking to is the fact that you had no intention on this relate quote unquote relation because you probably were never in an actual relationship with her mm -hmm. um what what does that do to you know our our women as far as the grooming and the overall um walking into maturity if it's just okay for men to have sex with the women because they allow it, so to speak. That goes back to personal responsibility. That goes back to upbringing. Um, what do you look at as a man? What do you look at as happiness, fulfillment? That's you. But that goes back to us not getting the information that's needed when we're little to uh -huh. make those decisions. We base a lot of our decisions based on what we see, uh -huh. what we hear. Uh -huh. um, if you don't have a role model that can tell you, boy, you know, you need to, you know, get to know her, you know, get to know yourself, get to find who you are, and that person doesn't make you, then you, right. you're apt to just do whatever makes you happy. You, your child, your kid. Because now you just let a kid run around in a store, uh -huh. just happy, go lucky about, oh, I got free candy. I'm going to keep getting free candy. But you as you grow, you're like, wait a minute, free candy can't be free. Uh, I'm getting it. It's going to cost me. Uh, and am I willing to pay the cost for the candy? Uh -huh. Or I'm willing to just keep it in free candy? In mm -hmm. this case, you as a male have to understand that, hey, you can't just be out here just having sex with anybody and everybody just because they give it to you for free mm -hmm. and take advantage of people. Mm -hmm. Then that's, that you're just a grown man. You, you're a boy. Mm -hmm. You're basically a boy who happens to be 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, you're still a boy. Mm -hmm. you, still, you have a boy mentality, mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. at some point, somehow you have to say, this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. I want more. I want to be appreciated. But that goes back to knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. If you never learn who you are or know who you are, mm -hmm. you'll just find little things to women, this woman here, this woman here, that and God forbid don't have a kid. Because mm -hmm. now that complicates even more because now you're like, oh, you know what? Now I got a kid. Mm -hmm. We just don't wake up one day and say, hey, you're going to get older every day. We just become a man. We're going to know the right thing. We're going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Someone has to teach us. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, we're not getting taught like we used to get mm -hmm. taught. Okay. Um, okay. And we have to learn. We learn how we learn. Mm -hmm. We learn based, you know, it's, it's stupid. It is society. Mm -hmm. Society says, you know, we should be able to just get as many women as possible, be that playboy, be that player, you know, be a pimp. All great titles. Sounds great. Right. But it doesn't make play any sense. Play a player. Yeah, you gotta be a mm -hmm. player. Right. But in the long run, I don't know many happy players. Yeah, it doesn't serve you well. No, uh -huh. it's like it's like retiring as a pimp. You mm -hmm. don't retire as a pimp. Right. You just fade away. Right. So in order to have a healthy relationship, to to grow old and have someone that who loves you for being you, that means you have to learn who you are. Okay. And and that takes time, but people don't want to take the time. It's easy to swipe. It's easy to take a pill. It's easy to do anything else than to look and say, what what changes I need to do to make me a better person? Well, like, just like how you said what society dictates as far as the number of women you need or the lifestyle um, as far as how you interact with the women, the women also, I think, kind of have a societal pressure as far as finding a certain type of guy and having certain expectations from you all right mm -hmm. it's just um like how i reference the leadership from a man mm -hmm. um and just when you spoke i realized just in that sentence that a lot of the leadership that i'm looking for or should or expecting of the men um you're saying that y'all don't have it it's mm -hmm. not been present it's not present and it has not been present for a long time so mm -hmm. then you had the broken man taking advantage of the broken woman and we circle around into this whole slurry of a cycle that we see that is very hard to break <laughs> that yes. is very hard to yes. break um and pretty much everything that we speak about <laughs> always just circles right back to that right mm -hmm. um yes. it does it, it all does 
you know, because again, men, it's hard for men to express their emotions anyway. You know, and plus mm -hmm. growing up, you know, if you get hurt, you be quiet, you suck it up, mm -hmm. you're a man, you, mm -hmm. you be all right, brush mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. But you hurt. But as a man, you, you're not supposed to have feelings. Right. You're supposed to just do what you're supposed to do, handle your business, you know, do your manly things and mm -hmm. be masculine and blah, blah, blah. But if you're a broken man and you're using all these things to, to make you feel like a man, at some point, you got to realize that, hey, this ain't working. Mm -hmm. But then that means you have to say, what do I need to do to find that thing to get me to where I need to be? Yeah. And that's finding that help or, or being vulnerable or, or opening up your heart and saying, hey, you know, here's a situation that just don't happen with men. It, it just don't happen. I mean, if you're lucky to have a conversation with a father or uncle who's open like that, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But in general, you know, we kind of like, you know, if you don't have a male figure, you figure it out. And your and the thing is, women can't teach you how to be a man. That's the other thing. Women can teach you a lot of things, but when it comes down to how to handle things men should handle, yes, they they can't do that. And 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 women, are like, I can do it all. You you can, but you can't. You, you can teach you can teach us certain things. Yeah, but you can't teach how to be because we can do it all, but we can't. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. But that speaks to the fact that we're pivoted in a position where we almost have to do it all. Mm -hmm. Or you saw someone else doing it all. Mm -hmm. And so you was programmed to think that, nah, that's what we do. We just do it all. We have to be super strong because my auntie was super strong. My mother was super strong. My grandmother was super strong. What am I going to be? Because then they're going to judge me. They're going to talk bad about me. But what are they going to say? We all made the same mistakes. We all... Thought the same way, so mm -hmm. we all end up on the same boat. Mm -hmm. but what you just say, your auntie, your aunt, mm -hmm. your grandma, your mm -hmm. great grandma, mm -hmm. all women. Mm -hmm. We're the men. Mm -hmm. so the now men they all got men. Do. They would all have men. And you know, oh, they it had doesn't. To men. They had to. You know, it, it ends up being um, the upbringings, whether there's a man present in the house or not, it's not. Sometimes it's just not a thriving situation you can be married or not married you can have a boyfriend or not have a boyfriend you could be um the auntie that's sleeping with the um you know the married man type of thing it, there's several different dynamics but when you speak to um raising strong women mm -hmm. you it can come you can you can have your dad in the household and that he can be married to your mom and all of the children be from him but when you have a strong woman who is general generationally strong mm -hmm. and she projects that strong image doesn't matter about that male dynamic mm -hmm. anymore they cut it off mm -hmm. let me tell you right now i don't care what a man does this mm -hmm. is what you do right mm -hmm. that's how you groom the strong woman. You you toss out you the favorite phrase, I don't care what a man do. I don't care what <laughs> you know. And that is the problem. Because when you start reducing men to just a a you know a, a you know puppet or just a chair, a prop, mm -hmm. now you reduce the family because mm -hmm. he has to have a say in how things are going. Mm -hmm. You may not like it. Mm -hmm. But you have to have. He, I mean, kids have to see that. They have to yeah. see that. Hey, you know, sometimes mama is running things. Sometimes daddy's running things. Yeah, yeah. And and that way they know that. Hey, you know, I, it's cool that I can't do everything. Sometimes a lot of men feel less than a man when they can't afford to take care of home mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And the woman makes more than them, and they feel a certain way. Like you know, I can't believe you know she, she got the pants in the family. Well, what you should look at it, if we're if we're a unit, if unit is good, we as a unit are doing well. Because I may not have it now. You may be taking care of it right now at this point. At some point, I'm going to get there. But that means I have to work on getting there. I can't just be whining and complaining about, well, you know, I, I'm working this and I'm doing this. You got to do something. You got to get up and do the work to make it better. Because then your kids see that. Because your kids see that, hey, you know, mom and dad, yeah, they're struggling. Things ain't that easy. But they're working together. So now that's something as a as a young child girl, young child boy, certain things you look for. Because you say, hey, this is how my family yeah. grew up. So I need to look for that. Yeah. So you, you're going to look for a woman who's like that. 
you can look somebody who's going to be supportive so at that point the game is a little different because you kind of know what you're looking for because a lot of people really don't know what look for it's like hey you know i want companionship and i can't tell you how many women and men i heard i don't want i don't want to be alone so that means i'm willing to accept anything to not be alone and that ranged from from the 20s up to the 60s heard. but are you really willing to accept anything i think a lot of them are i think a lot of them have in the beginning they had this huge dream about i'm going to find that mr right he, we're going to do this we're going to do that but then you make decisions in your 20s mm -hmm. that now put you in their 30s still thinking the same thing but look a little tempered now because mm -hmm. you're in your 30s a little mm -hmm. older um you know you know he's still out there you know i just got to find him you know now yeah. now if you have a kid that comes into play and, Tools, you're your and, and you're you're no you're no longer with the kid's father is mm -hmm. what you're saying no so now you're still father, looking to not be alone looking. but now you have a little bit of baggage mm -hmm. okay okay and now you're in your 40s and mm -hmm. now you're like oh well you know hmm but i'm not looking for that guy who's gonna be um you know come off the jet plane and go take me and whisk me off my feet I gotta be realistic now. I'm, I'm 40 years old with two kids, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not just gonna accept any old body, right? But I do need someone, you know, to, to share my life with. And then you start to make decisions that you would normally wouldn't make in your 20s and 30s, but now that desperation starts to kick. So in. you're saying your standards change? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And okay. now you're like, okay, yeah, he's cool. He ain't what I would normally would have went with or went for, mm -hmm. but he all right. But now you start to settle, and then you waste some time there. And then the other thing, you got to stop wasting time. If it's not going to work out, just say, you know what, it's not going to work. You should be, you're old enough to know that it's not going to work out. Okay. You know, if he's uh -huh. dragging you on and, you know, and he acting real funny, he disappears on you, talking about, I got to look at his phone, I got to, no. You're no. doing too much, in other words. You're doing too uh -huh. much. If I gotta wait a minute, I, I put a GPS on your phone and, and I book into your, your Facebook said this and, and, and I saw you on IG with this and you would like you have gone into drama like that. Mm -hmm. And now it's more than drama though, Malcolm. It's violating each other. You're yeah. creating a lifestyle where you think it's okay to violate each other because you can. Yes. This so I go through your phone. I broke into your phone, and like so it. it's okay for me to have access. You know what I have access, like as a po. And you, you don't, you don't leave. You no. don't like get this information or this proof to like say. You know what? I have the confirmation that what this person was saying or doing for me or to me is not true. Mm -hmm. It's false, and now I'm gonna leave. You say, I have this information mm -hmm. of the seat. Mm -hmm. I'm going to confront them. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to ask them to change. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's never, there's and not the change, change never happens. It's never going to happen. The change never occurs. And then we just do this all over again. And after the first and second go round, you know, he's accepting. Well, you're accepting. We're both accepting who yes. we both are. Yes. Because mm -hmm. again. Once he realizes, like, I threw the rock, it hit the window, it didn't break. Yeah. Hmm. I just don't throw it as hard. I keep throwing against the window. Yeah. And if it did break, I right, broke. You'll fix it. And I'll keep throwing the rock at And mm -hmm. you'll keep getting mad at me throwing the rock at the window. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to keep doing it because you fixed it it's last not, time. It, that's not breaking it. Yeah. And if it do break, it just only gets fixed. Yeah. And if you don't so like why it, would I stop? Whatever. Yeah. So then now time goes away time ticks away baby mm -hmm. grows now you're in your 50s mm -hmm. so now you're like oh wait a minute now i'm 50 i got a kid mm -hmm. I, i've been in multiple relationships that's going nowhere mm -hmm. oh my god what i'm gonna do so now you just start looking at anybody if he's breathing you know as long as he he ain't got aids or maybe he ain't gay or maybe he ain't down a little hey, now i'm selling which means now so you're saying whoa 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 I need to go back and find out what's going on with me right now. Because uh -huh. now I'm looking at my 50-year-old self with 20-year-old eyes. I need to take these glasses off and readjust my focus. Because now, where am I? What do I want to do? Mm. Where am I going? Right. And you have to be really, really honest with yourself. And say, okay, here's what I need to do to make changes. Here's what I need to do to get to this point. You may find a guy. He may not be that guy you saw in your 20s. 
He may be a guy, he may not be a guy who's making $100,000. Mm -hmm. He may be a guy making $30,000, mm -hmm. but he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. And you can't now look and say, well, he's only making 30. Well, I can't, he, how are you going to help me get somewhere? Mm -hmm. Well, he's a good guy. You know, he may not went to school. Where are these brothers that making all this money? Where's this hundred hundred thousand? What do they call them? Six figure winner at six. six have figure. we seen? Have we seen these guys in real life? Because I kind of feel like, generally speaking, you either know a lot of them or you know none of them, right? True. And generally, when you know a lot of them, you kind of know all of them, mm -hmm. right? True. And I don't care how little bit of money I make or how much money I make. My money is for my lifestyle. Exactly. So if I'm a six figure earner, Malcolm, mm -hmm. and I've been living a single life mm -hmm. and you're trying to get with me in my thirties, mid thirties, mm -hmm. early forties, mm -hmm. late forties, I'm already pre-spent my money. I already know how my money <laughs> yep. roll. So I don't care if I make $40,000 a year, $80,000 a year, $120,000 a year you need to be wiggled into this budget expense so why are we getting hung up on the nuances of how much old boy make a year because wow. it all gets spent different very very true because we are baggage too exactly right and, and as you get older you, you get baggage. more baggage exactly so the hundred thousand dollars is different you know depending on the amount of baggage that you have mm -hmm. um that that can be cut down real quick and de depending on how your lady spends exactly. i mean your your hundred thousand dollars just not enough even if you had no baggage so exactly i so, still needed to work <laughs> <laughs> exactly and that's the truth because yeah you're looking at people you have to adjust every time you have to look at where you are mm -hmm. realistically where you are not yeah. where you want to be where you should have been where you ought to been no where are you right here at this moment, at this point of time? And you have to make decisions. Mm -hmm. You say, you know what? What I did before ain't work. Yes, I'm still here. Cause I'm still here. It's like, how's that been working out for you? It Whatever has. you've been doing, it ain't been working out for you. No. You're not getting the result that you want. But then you wake up every day doing the same thing and expecting All over different again. results. That's insanity. Mm -hmm. To keep doing the exact mm -hmm. same thing. Trying and to find a, a good result. woman in the same bar every friday doesn't work why are you going there why are you going there <laughs> why are you going there you're, you're attracting the same, same type of woman people. same women all and, the and time like, i can't believe i can't get no better mm -hmm. not gonna get no better mm -hmm. you're in the same you're in the same pool yep. get out the pool yep. go to a different different pool mm -hmm. but when you go to the pool understand what you're going to the pool for don't just get the pool and go to another pool no you can't the... go with that same mindset to, mm -mm. to a different pool mm -mm. you gotta say listen this ain't working here. I got to do something different because if you go to this pool, it may be a different type of woman there. Mm -hmm. It may and be in a... order to attract and deal with a different type of woman, you have to be a different type of man or come in with a different type of approach. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You got to have a different mindset. You do. Because if not, then what happens is you become that woman who becomes, I call petty. Because now you're like, why can't I be like her? Why can't I be like her? Stop worrying about other people. Mm. Why can't you be the best you can be? Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about why. But well, they've been married, and, and, and I know I look better than her. Mm -hmm. I know I got more money than her. I know I'm more educated than her. Mm -hmm. I know I got this and that other thing. But you understand, it does, none of that matters. Right. If you right. if your personality sucks, I don't care what you are. You could be worth a bit. You could be Rihanna. But you don't know how to spend your money. It don't matter what how, how much money you generate. How much money your man brings to the table if all you know how to do is spend the money on frivolous stuff then what you have in the end if you don't know how to budget your money to vacation with you and your family mm -hmm. then you know the couple next door looks like the couple that has money to vacation but they might make the same amount of money as you if not less if not less in some Okay. situations exactly. if all you do is eat your money because you enjoy going out fine dining mm -hmm. then guess what you don't have the same amount of money to put towards a nicer car or a bigger home nope. because you spent your money totally different and so while you have all of these you know parameters on what type of man you're trying to attract and how much money he should be earning mm -hmm. you've got no clue on how to actually run a household which is technically supposed to be the woman's traditional part Yes. when we want to speak about it so if you don't want to work and you want to be a traditional woman who stays at home half of the women out here don't know how to 
you know, maximize the money inside the household anyway. Exactly. Technically, you're not a cook either, but that's another whole topic. But that's I'm a just saying. Whole another kettle of fish. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just, and a lot of women have to think about this. You want to get the BBLs. You want to get this, the fake this, the fake that. That's all fine and dandy. Mm-hmm. But if you stink inside, mm-hmm. if you are just rotten to the core, yeah, God's gonna figure that out. Yeah. You're gonna look and say, "Damn, she got fine, you know, nice, mm-hmm. fat." Mm-hmm. But damn, she got a stink attitude. Mm-hmm. And at that point, she's you, fun to be with. And what happens is, mm-hmm. you're gonna start to roll up on your years, mm-hmm. and them mm-hmm. years start to kick in, and you don't gave up to every time, Dick and Harry. Mm-hmm. Next, you know, your years run out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Them GPY then, is over. GPYs are done. And yeah. then when, they, when they're done, then what? Now you, you reduce to... Settling into anything. Anything. Uh-huh. And, and, and let me tell you, there's always a bum out there looking to take care of you and sleep in your bed and just use you. Why? Because he needs someone to live. Yeah. Yeah. You always can find somebody. It's just as that somebody worth your body. Exactly. And now you you like oh yeah I gotta take care of him and me I gotta do mm-hmm. this well mm-hmm. that's what you did you mm-hmm. you made a decision right you know still so you saying let me step back and reevaluate with my life see where I'm at where my head is at where my heart is at mm-hmm. no you want to look at the TV you want that should make that BBL gonna make me happy mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. that money gonna make me happy mm-hmm. this gonna make me happy these no you're just walking around with all that money on you mm-hmm. and you still won't have anybody right and nobody's gonna even look at you. That's the only thing you like. Or if they do look at you, they're going to go, mm-hmm. they're going to do what they got to do, they're going to bounce because mm-hmm. you got baggage. Because now all those years of not having that person, not mm-hmm. not having someone love you, yeah. or you're not loving yourself enough to really love someone. Right. Now you you, you become angry. You Because become... that's you do see that a lot of women, they're not able to engage in a relationship where they can. Like you see, hear women say, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather be alone. I'd rather live by myself. Mm-hmm. And you're like, it's like you miss something. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to give care to anyone. No, you don't want to nurture and love on anyone. Like it's all too much for you. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, that's, that's a crazy concept. Where you're like, no, I want to be in a relationship, but I ain't trying to take care of no man. You want (laughs) to be taken care of. Yes. But you ain't trying to take care of no man. It's almost sort of um, what McKinsey says earlier, you know, I'm buying this. I'm doing that. I'm picking picking you up. We live in the suburbs. You know what I'm saying? You got to drive everywhere. And I do expect for you to come pick me up. Because guess what? I drove all week and I'm tired. I want to rest, right? Exactly. But what happens when he wants the rest, right? It's like we, um, yeah, we are caught up and we kind of don't have um, much to give back or kind of that idea that we have to give back, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you, what do you think going to come from that? What we have right now, mm-hmm. a lot of lost people, a lot mm-hmm. of people who are looking for short-term happiness because they don't understand a lot of people don't think they deserve long-term happiness mm-hmm. i think a lot of people just realize that you know think that you know what it's obvious i'm I, this is my lot in life this is where i'm meant to be because mm-hmm. i've tried other things and this this is just what what it is be. yeah and in actuality it isn't and actually yeah. you have to every day get up and say if this is not what your life what you want your life to be mm-hmm. you have to change it nobody's mm-hmm. going to change it like i said no guy's going to change it. No, no woman's going to change it you have to change mm-hmm. it and you have to say hey i'm going to do the work necessary to get to where i need to get to yeah. or be where i want to be so yeah. it's, it's not going to happen overnight it's not yeah. going to happen you know i'm i'm, I'm going to change for seven days i'm going to do this i'm going to do a quick detox of my soul for like 15 days no mm-hmm. that means you have to change the habit you have set up a habit for your life and now you have to change it because right. the habit doesn't work anymore it's like smoking you smoke all the time but hey you know what i cough a lot you know what i got i need to stop smoking mm-hmm. then you keep smoking and eventually you end up with unfortunately lung cancer mm-hmm. i can't believe i got lung cancer mm-hmm. i went from two packs a day to one pack a day but you're still smoking <laughs> <laughs> so you're still going to get sick you're going yeah. to catch something and yeah. now you're going to die going against the grain exactly uh-huh. so now you guys i gotta stop smoking i gotta go cold turkey and i gotta do 
other mechanisms, mm-hmm. coping mechanisms to not do it again. It's not just one thing. Yeah. But one thing people keep thinking is it's one thing. I, I have to do this one thing. No, it's a multitude of things. You have mm-hmm. to change the mindset. You have to change how you think about life, how you carry yourself, how you walk in life, how you do things in life. And once you make that conscious decision to do that, then you, can, then you say, I have to do it. And you just do it. And you just keep moving. So, you know, it's just... People, I, I'm just upset people keep thinking it's easy. Nothing is easy. Everything is about making sure that if you want to really make a real change in your life, you have to do the work. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen overnight. It's mm-hmm. not going to, like your friends are going to help you. Nobody's going to help you. You have to help yourself. Like I said, Lord help those that help themselves. Right. You're not going to sit there. You can sit there and say, oh, Lord, please give me rain. I ain't going to get up and move, but I'm waiting for the rain. You'll, you'll sit right there. And probably die with your hands open like this, and be just as toasty as a burnt piece of toast. True, because <laughs> you you're but not gonna just, do the work. Yeah, you just you want do. somebody to give do. it to you. No, if you want it bad enough, you gotta work for it. You gotta get it. Mm-hmm. So you know, you gotta pay attention and respond accordingly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like something happens, you pay attention to what's happening, and you gotta respond accordingly to it. You gotta readjust. You got one bad situation, you have to position yourself to okay. where you're not doing that twice. And um, are we learning from our mistakes? I don't think we are. I think right now we're just trying to find easy ways around it. Mm-hmm. I think we're just trying to talk a way out of it mm-hmm. rather than say, again, I don't want to do the hard work. I just want to do something that's going to change enough that I can look like I'm changing, but I'm really not changing. What's allowing us to live in relationship, live without relationships for so long? Because a part of me feels like there's certain parts of modern day society that allows us to live the lifestyles that we're living where we don't value relationships with each other. Meaning, um, even as basic a relationship as taking care of our grandparents mm-hmm. or the elderly inside the community, mm-hmm. um, taking care of our um, parents, mm-hmm. um the interactions with um, significant others, like what's going on with us? I think economics has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. Um, Our standards in society is lower. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't, we don't value life in ourselves. Like let's say the Japanese, Mm -hmm. Japanese take care of their Mm -hmm. elderly. They don't just say, Oh, you know, we'll put them in their home. They figure it out. They mm-hmm. take care of them. It's mm-hmm. it's a it's a duty to take care of them. Mm-hmm. And by having that duty, they learn that the older tell the younger, they teach them. Mm-hmm. We don't spend the time. We don't even spend the time with someone older to learn what they're teaching. Right. Or what they want to teach. Right. Because right now, yeah, that's old. Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah. I don't know. They ain't helping right now. But the just the core, the core, of what older people can tell you will help you. And every generation yet to be period here yeah will help you, but you have to listen. You're not there for oh my life is so busy so fast. No, it's not mm-hmm. because when the pandemic hit, you were home, mm-hmm. and at that point you was like oh well wow my life really isn't where I thought it would be. Yeah, no because you worked, you went out, you hung out, you never really dealt with yourself mm-hmm. because it's so easy to go ahead and go out to a bar get a drink go mm-hmm. out somewhere and get something to eat, mm-hmm. hang on with some other friends mm-hmm. so that we never really had to deal with yourself so we're constantly ignoring self and constantly. yeah so i um tasha had my sister had suggested that i watch this one movie mm-hmm. um chief daddy on netflix <laughs> okay. and it's an african movie nigerian flick and um I said it to say that got me watching all the Nigerian show movies. <laughs> oh, oh, they no. were just oh. hilarious. <laughs> but it was it's a few dynamics within the culture that um you can see does not exist here. Mm-hmm. Um and the one main thing that I noticed that exists in their culture is the parental guidance. Mm-hmm. within the relationships mm-hmm. that I don't know necessarily exists here. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you have a problem with your mate, you pick up the phone and you genuinely call in 
the parents or the elderly for help, right? Mm -hmm. The very idea that you would burden your grandmother with um, your marriage problems. Nowadays, to most people would seem a little bit like you got to be at the end end of your rope as opposed to just thinking like this is just what we do. Yeah, exactly. we go seek the church first mm -hmm. or we go seek, you know, someone's um, public service, counseling service um, to tend to our relationships. Even, um, you know, like a crazy situation with you and your children. Sometimes people go to counseling for that mm -hmm. as opposed to asking, you know, uh, an elder to step in mm -hmm. um, to kind of help navigate you through life. And it's just like you said, the foundation of what our elderly have to say will resonate through all the generations. Mm -hmm. um, but I just thought that was very interesting how some cultures really are navigating the um, the relationships totally different versus how we are. I don't I have to piggyback and loop back around to the Will and Jada thing mm -hmm. and the whole idea of the um, slap to the Chris Rock situation, yes. right? When I spoke to my son about that, mm -hmm. I spoke to how, no, it's, it's about time we had to start defending the black women mm -hmm. within our community. And sorry, it was, you know, against Chris Rock, but um, do the women in our culture feel... Um, like put on a pedestal and protected and all that good stuff no. to be acting accordingly. No, and that has happened. That deterioration has happened over decades. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at the '60s. We had the Black Power, we mm -hmm. had civil rights, and you know, James Brown. You know, I'm black and I'm proud. And you had it. You mm -hmm. had the Panthers. You had other organizations that gave us pride. Mm -hmm. I think once we start getting into that mindset of things mm -hmm. rather than family um that start to change a lot of things because now you, the important the family is, wasn't as important now as it was then because now you think if i have the money i can buy whatever i need yeah. i don't really need the old person i don't need to listen to anybody because yeah. i'm making money so yeah. you know this child care to me. something as basic as a child care right you can treat your mother any old type of way because she's not the person who's taking care of your children anymore, right? Yes. Your mom would be retired to, or grandma, mm -hmm. take care of the children. So you had to respect your elders all the time because you kind of needed them. Yes. They were still ingrained into your lifestyle, whereas now you drop your children up to a little daycare facility. Your mother probably doesn't live in the same state as you. And so the relationships are kind of, I guess, faltered. And we kind of, yeah, if I haven't seen or talked to mom and, you know, a few months or on a regular basis why would i call her when my relationships kind of hit the fan so to speak right yeah why would you because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. again that's that's right now the internet has the answers if you got a problem just google it yeah you should be able to find the answer yeah but no life isn't a google search. yeah life is learn, learning from people with experience yes who went through things right and be able to talk to them and find their way again their way is not the way mm -hmm. is a way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we as a society need to stop trying to find the way mm -hmm. there's multiple ways you just have to figure out okay this may not work for me i may try something else but we just want to find i just want to deal with it now you know and, and take this pill and be done with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and there's no such thing no such thing which yeah. means everybody's situation is different which means you have to also be open to listen to people because mm -hmm. everybody you know Everyone has their own version of an answer. You have to listen to it. And as crazy as it may seem, the person you may think, ah, that person ain't got the answer. You may say, hey, I never thought about it like that before. Yeah. And But you can use that. And really, life is like a toolbox. I tell my son all the time, we all have a toolbox. We start off with a toolbox. Then you get tools based on your parents, based on who raised you, based on things you may find. Mm. Tools you find laying So around. in other words, you don't have any tools in the box. You have no tools. You have a box. Okay. And then someone gives you a tool. Uh-huh. And then that may, you may not, you know, you don't know what it is. It's, just, it's in the box. Yeah. But eventually, as you live and go forward, mm -hmm. you may use some of those tools. Mm -hmm. Some tools, some tools, somebody else may need it. Right. And you just take it and give it to them. Right. And they can use it. And so along the way, you'll pick and exchange tools, buy tools, mm -hmm. based on what your needs are. But at some point, you have to give all those tools away to someone. Because as you enter that fourth quarter in life, yeah, you can't take the tools with you. Right, the tools right. have to be given to someone else. Right. So that's when you say, "Hey, 
you'll be different people in your life and say, hey, you may need this tool. Just going to talk. If you sit back and listen to people and you can hear, people will tell you what's going on in their life. Mm -hmm. If you just listen. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing we don't do. We don't listen. Yeah. We want to talk to people. We want to tell people, this is what you should do. Sit back and listen. Listen mm -hmm. to what they say in, t in its entirety mm -hmm. and say, oh, I never, okay, I never thought about it from this point of view. Yeah. And then start coming up with some answers and then start searching for the answers. Because it's not going to just come to you. You got to start searching for it. Right, right. Allowing the perspective to be shifted. Right. Exactly. Right. I can't say, well, you know, nobody can tell me anything. Everyone in this world can teach you something. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, and different. Mm -hmm. and, and really, it does. I mean, you can talk to somebody, oh, I'm, you know, they teach me not to use drugs. Or they, they tell me I need to talk more around a relationship. But you'll learn from everybody. Yeah. And you just have to be smart enough to say, let me take it. Take it for what it's worth. Put it in the toolbox. Mm -hmm. I mean, I need it. And down the road, I may need it. Right, But right. you have to be open enough to understand that something is wrong and then make the change. Mm -hmm. And until we as a society realize that what we're doing doesn't work. Right. That's what it is, right? What we are doing, it's not... It doesn't seem to be serving us. Mm -mm. <laughs> and so no. at what point do you deviate and say, you know what, we have to make uh, um, a better way. So mm -hmm. if you are raising daughters, give me the advice you're giving to your 18-year-old. Give me 17. Give me seven. No, give me 16. Because in my opinion, it's going to be the same advice over and over again. You know what? My advice would be... The same I would give to the 16 year old, that I would give to the five year old, that I would give to the one year old. Mm. Meaning, the self love starts when they're little. Mm -hmm. So if I'm training her and I'm telling her that you are worthy, mm -hmm. you are loved, mm -hmm. no one can treat you a certain way. If your dad don't treat you bad, mm -hmm. I don't expect you to take anything from anybody else. Okay. If I take you to get your nails done, if mm -hmm. I take you to get something to eat, I'm going to take you to the finest place just so a guy can't tell you, well, we're going to go to McDonald's and get a Happy Meal. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, mm, okay, that's for you because I don't eat Happy Meals. My daddy never took me out to get a Happy Meal. Mm -hmm. He always took me to the finest joints. Self-love has to be installed, instilled in her early. And it just continues. As she gets older, you're there for everything you're there for you know her recitals you're there for ballet you're you know you, you you're there that so she she knows what true love really is because really once a young lady understands sees it from her father she's not gonna accept anything less than that yeah but how do how do you advise her to navigate the dating scene well she has to she has to understand this very important thing this world is your world mm -hmm. meaning you don't have to accept anything that you don't want to accept. If someone's telling you something or trying to give you a line or whatever, understand. I'm going to tell you all the lines. I'm going to tell you what we're going to tell you to get, your, get them draws. We're going to tell you, as a male, we're going to try everything possible to get them draws. We're going to tell you we love you. You know, girl, I respect you. I'm, 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 I'm oh, y'all dig deep. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can't that used to be a player. Stuff, that Malcolm stuff, used to that, be a little that, player. That sucker stuff works <laughs> for suckers. But when you're trying to really, really, really get to her, you're going you're gonna to hit all the little corners. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know what kind of chick she is. You don't mm -hmm. know if she's, again, broken, mm -hmm. cracked, mm -hmm. or shattered. Right. So based on her answers to you, it's like, okay, oh, she's really messed up. So I know... <laughs> I can I say a lot of things to her and just, and she, I, I, I own her. She I'll pretty much, I, she'll melt. She'll just melt she'll in my do ass. anything I want to do mm -hmm. because I've, I've, I've touched all the parts of her soul and her being that's untouched mm -hmm. by Or by yearning love. to be touched, yes. right? Yeah. So you got to tell her, she can't, she can't fall mm -hmm. from the games mm -hmm. because again, it has to be real. And mm -hmm. again, in the beginning, you're friends anyway. You're not going to be out there like, you know, we're going to do this, that. And I'm like, yeah. First of all, you don't know him. Mm -hmm. So you want to find out where's his head at? Where's mm -hmm. he going? Where he wants in his life? You know, where are you striving for? <laughs> and so if the first thing that you advise her to do is to establish a friendship. Can we mm -hmm. agree to that? Yes. How do we not be friend zoned in the friendship? How long is that going on? Are we are we dating while we're establishing this friendship? Are you paying for meals in today's society? You know, I would for me, mm -hmm. I would I'm going to give her money. Mm -hmm. So 
I don't want her to be behold on him like, you know, man, he gonna pay for this food because now I think I, he gonna pay for this dinner. I'm gonna have to do something for him for this dinner. <laughs> something strange. Mm-hmm. So I can do some strange things for this, <laughs> ah, for this food. Damn that. I'm giving you a credit card. Here's your credit card. If your desire is to make your daughter feel independent, mm-hmm. do you not think that that would go in direct competition with the desire for her to be in a relationship because if she feels like she can accomplish everything by herself why would she need someone else that goes back to self you have to establish with any person but in particular with well, men and women boys and girls self-love mm-hmm. worthiness mm-hmm. and understand that yes you're going to accomplish a lot of things in life you will be able to do a lot of things in life but you won't be able to share that with someone mm-hmm. so you don't confuse independence with dependent with depending on someone and it, it, it's like i know who i am i know what i need right. i just need someone who can help we can go on the same road go in the same direction to to for some goal so it's like i don't need you cuz i really do mm-hmm. as a human you need human contact mm-hmm. you need someone to love you mm-hmm. you want someone to love you for who you are not for how you look what you can give them but you're such a good person that I love you for you mm-hmm. and, and you should love me for that. So I want someone to share that with, cause I want to be able to, to go somewhere and we take a bunch of pictures or not take pictures and we just enjoy ourselves. So knowing that you're, you, I want somebody to be a part of my journey mm-hmm. rather than I want to drag you along with my journey or I want to be behind your journey, this journey together. Yeah. But then only then you'll find out if I talk to the guy because you don't know what he, you don't know what the game is. Again, he could be a player, he could be you know a guy, legit guy. He could be a, a, a quiet guy who just don't know how to really talk <laughs> to women. You know, you get some guys who are good guys who mm-hmm. just can't communicate. Can't communicate. Mm-hmm. So you have to come across to hey, I want you to this have a conversation. This is where we're going. Let's see where we're trying to go. Mm-hmm. You may not be trying to go there, mm-hmm. and if that's the case, then I say, oh, okay, we're not trying to go there. He may not be ready for that. So he may be a friend. That may be the friend zone. It may be a guy say, hey, I'm trying to get there where you're trying to get to. I'm trying to go where you're trying to go. But you want to know what he's doing. So you want your daughter to date with a credit card? I'm going, I want her to have a credit card because I want her not to be dependent upon anyone or any situation. But why can't? No, I just feel like when we're dating, I'm supposed to be a little bit vulnerable in the fact that I'm supposed to be okay in my mind that he got the bill. Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like it comes with the territory of the whole, like, grooming you for marriage, so to speak. Like, I have to be vulnerable in knowing that my guy got me. I feel you. That's based on how we were brought up. Based okay. on these guys now, okay. they may say, hey, I kicked out about $400. I don't took to, to <laughs> where the finest place. And $400 and some liquor. <laughs> And then you're like, well, you know, I ain't really feeling it. He'd be like, okay, well, you know what? Pay your half? Yeah. Nah. And then you're like, but that's a learning experience. You say, okay, I'll pay my half. You learn from that. You no, learn. you will not pay your half. You will get up and you will leave. That's, hey. that's, okay. We got to get some what? training etiquette for women because that's what you won't do. First of all, why do, how is a four? That's an anniversary dinner. See, we're, are we dating incorrectly? Because why are you dating a woman who has no ties and commitments? We're not dating exclusively mm-hmm. on a four hundred dollar date for dinner. Well, it and so and economically, can this guy even afford this dinner at this age, or should he be affording this type of meal at this age? Well, see, that goes back. You need to know. You need to be dating a guy who knows himself. If this guy try try to you know flaunt. And he can't afford it. That's what it kind of sounds like. Because if you're, you know, if you're talking to me about first date, mm-hmm. I mean, we're just getting to know. We can go grab some. I don't. We don't have to be at the best of the best. I'm saying on the first date. True. Uh, we're not going to Fridays. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't have to be at the best. We're just trying to break the ice i'd assume Mm -hmm. um but a 400 hundred hundred dollar date in my opinion for someone who is a sensible individual Mm -hmm. 
perhaps we're celebrating a one year anniversary if if we're just dating but mm-hmm. generally speaking those are serious restaurants for people who have real money and you know maybe this is our 10 year anniversary and we're going out on you know we're going to drop we're going to drop the bag tonight on a, on a meal, but you've already invested so much in me and I've already, you know, invested so much in you as well. Are we dating incorrectly here? Because that's really what that sounds like to me. And I guess it starts, it's really, really, when you get together, you got to find out which, where you're going, truly where you're going. I mean, mm-hmm. eliminate the lust. Mm-hmm. Eliminate how she look good, he look good. Mm-hmm. Okay. We set that aside. We both look good. We, we, look we good. over that part, right? That's why so, we attract the sweet shopper. Exactly. Yeah. So what do I like about you? Mm-hmm. What do you like your personality? Do I like to know more about you? Are you telling me more about you? Are you giving me more? Am I giving you enough of me? Mm-hmm. We need to really know who each other is because we went through the fluff. So let's find out what, what makes you tick. You know, does money make you tick? Are mm-hmm. you family oriented? Mm-hmm. You know, are you, you know, let me find your background. Mm-hmm. You know, if you came from a two person, a two uh, parent background, if you come from one parent background, what makes you? Because mm-hmm. then at that point, I can see maybe some of the things that may rub you a little differently. If I'm a one, this, my, my mama brought me, raised me. Yeah. But you had a two parent. Mm-hmm. So my, I'm looking differently on a two parent because I don't know what that is. Yes. My mom raised me. Yeah. I, I never had a dad. I don't know who that bum is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you had a dad. So now I'm like, wow, she has two, you know, two parent house, and you know she's, she, you know, stability. I'm gonna feel a certain way because I'm like, well, she's to a, a guy, male, you know. And I, I'm, my mama raised me, so I don't really have that, that flow on how to really interact with her. And, mm-hmm. You know, is she gonna look at me differently because of that? Yeah. That and that's something as a guy you look at because you want to look at what's going to turn her off when it comes to me if it's going to be long term. Mm-hmm. If I got some issues, then you, you need to talk about them. The other things you have to talk about. It. You can't just say, "Well, I'm not going to bring it up." It's going to come up at some point. You know how you think about kids, how you think about you know religion and, and certain things like that. It's going to play play a role in where you're going to go. Um, you know, she could say, "Well, you know, I'm I'm spiritual. I'm not religious." You may say, well, you know, I go to the Catholic church every mass, every every mm-hmm, month, Sunday. Mm-hmm. That could be a turnoff. You're like, yeah. well, you know, she's not. Deal breaker. Yeah. Now we got to do something different. Nice person. Mm-hmm. Great personality. Ah, but she don't go to church like I like her to go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you may have missed that. Down the road, you could say, Dad, if I had just, just rolled with her and I had got church involved, she may be the perfect person for me. Yeah. But those are the things that as any relationship you got to work through. But you got to be honest enough and talk about it. Right. See, where are you? And you got to constantly right. find out where you are. And this is where it. you get out of the bed on, right? Because mm-hmm. you don't have these conversations if you're just jumping in the bed every time we see each other. No. Yeah. No, this is real conversation. This is real talk. This is, you know, you sitting around looking at a movie. You, you could pull a movie out and say, hey, this movie, I like this movie because, and you may not like the movie because of the same reason. But then it's oh we're different on how we look at things. Mm-hmm. And the conversation, you could stay on the we could both be staying on the same spot on the hill looking out and see two totally different things. Mm-hmm. You're like, wait a minute, how is that possible? Absolutely. We, same position. Perspective's different. Exactly. So yeah. you have to learn where you are. As you know, and then you find out, do I want to move forward? Mm-hmm. Is this something I need to really think about? Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to put a maybe I'm I'm more put more into it than she would put into it. Then you gotta figure that out. Okay, let's say that, so we don't agree on the, um, how our daughters would date, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But let's say they did date someone and they got to the point where they felt like they were ready for the next step, right? Mm -hmm. Where perhaps they're dating exclusively, they've Mm -hmm. stamped their relationship, it's just them, their boyfriend and girlfriend, Mm -hmm. right? Because I think we'd both agree that perhaps you should hold off with doing the do until you at least said, hey, we're exclusive and we're just doing this together, right? We won't agree to that part. Now, how long in are we involved or dating exclusively or a stamped relationship before we give up the cookie? Because I think Steve Harvey has the published book that mentioned, I don't know, a 90 day rule before yeah, the cookie. Yeah, 90 job. day rule before you get was, the Was cookie. this 90, 90 yeah. days? Mm-hmm. Um, what do you say? My thing is, it's based on the individual and it's based on, you have to take, as hard as it's going to be, you have to take emotions out of it. Because emotionally and lust wise and, and hormonal wise, you're going to go for it. Uh, you, you, will, 
you want to go well, okay let's, let's, let's get busy because you also want to see if we also compatible in that way uh-huh because you sometimes don't know it's love at first sight could be uh-huh Possibly. or love at first uh yeah it could be <laughs> or after that first um it could be like oh there's no love here at all it could be like oh, oh no this could be this you're could gonna be like, leave me oh. traumatized after that at that point you have to oh this ain't working out i might leave but that's when you should be mature enough mm-hmm. to say, you know what, this is not gonna work out, and then end it in such a way so you're not destroying her like that. No, you've bad. destroyed me. The fact that we've done the do, and it was like, oh, you got to go because that was oh, not see, it. Nah, she's destroyed. I don't know okay. how you end that well. Well, it, you have to. Pre- you kill my dog or something, and yeah. let me dump you. Okay. Because <laughs> okay, okay. Here's a because. The thing is, you talk about an honest relationship. You talk, you want to be honest. You don't want to just, you know, jump up. Oh no! And you may say, well, maybe, maybe it was a bad. Maybe you know, it was a bad go. It, it was a bad go. Uh-huh. You may let's let's do it again. And then maybe the second time, oh, really, we're really not connected like that okay. for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then you have to say, I got to be man enough to say it's not going to work out when it comes to maybe getting to the next level do you reveal why it didn't work out how much how much like how much of it is closure and how much of it is you just stomping on me uh that's when you want to be delicate delicate when it comes to you want to crush her you want to say well you're so bad so so no tell me your grandmother died and you gotta go take care of her down in texas or something so you gotta leave town or something let me down real soft malcolm let me down real soft i can't do Oh, I'm like fragile. I'm fragile. Okay, which means you have to be honest. You have to say, you know what? This is not even you. This is me. Because really, it's you. It's 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 me. Uh, it's not you. It's like uh, me saying, oh, this ain't what I want to flow with. And yeah. So you don't want to destroy her. You want to just make sure that you let her down such a way that she's a good person. You give her all the highlights. You got to give her the highlights. Uh-huh. You can't just say, stuff is bad. So not, no. Mm-hmm. You got to say, hey. It's it's not we're not compatible. I love you as a person. You're a great person. Don't and you dare do that, don't you? Cause y'all, you that that that's how we end up broken. And, but but and our, our girlfriend's bedroom, crying in the pillow in the corner. And, and, she like, girl, if you don't get no nah, no, nah, because he gave me the highlights first, and then he let me down, and, 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 and then he let it down. But see that, <laughs> but no. Here's when you say, listen. This has something to do with me. This has nothing to do with you. And and based on where I'm at, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be fair to you mm-hmm. to keep going down this road. Mm-hmm. And and I know that's not going to work out because I wouldn't want you to do that to someone else. Yeah. So is it fair to um to like spare my feelings, so to speak? I think it is. I mean, because again, I don't want you to think that you're a bad person. Mm-hmm. It's just the relationship wouldn't work for us. Because I feel like, in my opinion, like when I reference, you know, if you when you're breaking up with me, um, then I'll be broken. Because is that the truth? No, that's not no, really no, the truth, no, right? No, just no. because you was like, listen, Tamara, we, it was magical in the bedroom in the beginning, you know, but. Mm-hmm. I'm not really feeling us. I'm not feeling. I'm gonna be sad, you know. I'll be a little sad. I'm gonna be honest because you did pay for all those meals, you know, and I did have fun, <laughs> and it was fun while it lasted. Exactly. And technically, we were supposed to go to Puerto Rico together because I was feeling you, and you was real cute, and your hair was gonna be real long, and all our pictures. <laughs> but. <laughs> but, but yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. If. I, I'll just be hurt, but I'm not. I wouldn't be broken because no. ultimately you did not. You, you didn't screw me over, so to no. speak, right? No. You were man enough to have an honest conversation with me, and even there's a difference between me being hurt and me being broken, right? Exactly. And I think, yeah. So we'll spare my feelings. So you don't got to tell me your grandmother died in Texas, and you know you ain't never been to Texas See, a day in your life. Wrong. And, and that's um, just that's to me. That's and that's common to me. Yeah. Because if you do something wrong like that, yeah. somehow down the road it's gonna come out and get no, you. No, it's called Facebook. Because in two weeks <laughs> I'm gonna see you on Facebook. You talking about you went to Texas to go bury your grandmother, and you was out there in Puerto Rico. You know you told me you were taking See, me to Puerto and Rico. See, and that, come on, that's the problem. It was so. <laughs> Media. You don't need to tell all that. You, know, you do say, hey, you know, it ain't yeah. work out. And stay off social media. Yeah. Just just stay off. Or just keep it 100. Yeah. And yeah. then that way, you don't ruin. A, 
you can still be friends. You can still say, hey, somebody you can talk to. Oh, so I can at least pass you in the grocery store without feeling like, ugh. Exactly. Ugh. Yeah, they'd be wrong. You know, yeah. to me, told me that. Yeah. And that's what's missing. People don't be honest. Mm -hmm. If you're honest with people, you you know, you, you don't destroy people. Mm -hmm. You don't ruin people. Mm -hmm. You don't break people. You don't people. break people. Yeah. It's just like. It's not to say we won't hurt feelings. No. We will always hurt each other's feelings. Um. I think in the dating realm, right? Oh, yeah. And just getting to know people, so to speak, sort exactly. of thing. Um, I think the issue is that we don't have to leave each other broken, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Um, because that's, I mean, come on, you come move into my house, you live on my couch for six months, you ain't got no job. Mm -hmm. I'm supporting you. I'm you. You dropping me off at work. You know. You taking my car. You know. You was late to pick the kids up. You then you late to pick me up. <laughs> Ain't no food in the house. Like, come on. You doing? And then you was cheating on me too, Malcolm. Yeah. Then you was running around. Nah, hey, man. Hey. You did too much, man. That's hey. broken. But you see, know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> but you know what? You allow that to happen. I did, but don't act like I don't feel broken now. I, I allowed it. I did because I wanted somebody to love me, Malcolm. I wanted to, and I needed a bit of control because my last relationship, you know what? That man kept going to work. Told me he was doing overtime. He wasn't doing no time. Check still coming up short, empty, all that <laughs> stuff. So now I just thought I was going to take a different approach. That was all. So I said, you know what? He don't want no job. Bet that. He can sit in the house, play his video. At least I know he in the house. He Steve. playing his video game. You Steve. said you was going to the grocery store. I didn't know you was going to Tamika house. Like, come on, you ain't have to play me out like see, that. That's but, all I'm saying. But see, this is what happens when you are searching for love in all the wrong places. You're not working on yourself. Bingo. Right? Because, because you're willing to, like I said before, I'm willing to accept anything <laughs> mm -hmm. to have someone because I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. And when, when we spoke earlier, right, in the beginning, you mm -hmm. give your apex version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So how does that speak to you when you're willing to just accept someone at their lowest when they're supposed to be presenting themselves at their peak? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely positive. So how could right. the result not be you being broken? And you know it's going to end up that way. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. Yeah, you do. Because you know it's not going to work. Right when he dropped you off the work. You know. <laughs> you knew right then and there. You ain't feel comfortable. <laughs> you know, it, didn't, it didn't feel good. No. It didn't feel good when you no. got out of the car. He didn't even kiss you goodbye. He spared you off. You already open. saw baby boy. So you are. Exactly. You know, you know what the deal is. You know he'll spare it off. He's like, oh, yeah. No, no, yeah he oh, took off. Damn, he on, yeah. left already. I left my life. He, he came by and talked to you. Yeah, he, he did. Yeah, he did real quick. Because I'm not bringing the seat later. Yeah. Nope. Ain't going. Mm -hmm. Ain't going. And mm -hmm. so. That means as we need to teach our young women mm -hmm. and young men mm -hmm. how to love themselves. Mm -hmm. Don't allow TV to teach them how to love mm -hmm. themselves. Don't allow uh, society to tell them how to love themselves. Mm -hmm. Don't allow other oh, my role models, Michael Jordan. <laughs> you don't know Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan played great basketball. Lousy human. <laughs> if you're allowing him to be your role model or your kid's role model, where are you? As someone that they don't know. Don't know. See so you, you look day. up to something or you create these falsities, right? Mm -hmm. Idolizing false um, ideas and notions. And yeah, so that does create a problem and an issue. And then so since you're um, raised to look for something that is false, now you're giving out false breakups. Mm -hmm. And now instead of you, you know, you're so scared that you're going to hurt the person, the other person, you prolong the situation. Some people prolong it for years. Years. And then... Instead of you just simply hurting someone's feelings, you end up breaking that person. And then we have the broken, playing with the broken. And now hurt hurts others. Mm -hmm. Because now you just want to, because, and think about it, you now like have baggage. Mm -hmm. So still learning from that experience, which is what you should do. <laughs> but Every... I'm taking too much with me from the experience. I should be taking nothing but myself, right? Nothing in the experience that you learn. Mm -hmm. so... Lesson, lesson you learn. Oh, I learned that lesson. It's mm -hmm. not gonna happen again. Mm -hmm. But you want to now throw it in the bag, yeah, and carry it. Yeah. It becomes harder and harder, harder and heavier. Heavier. The uh -huh. longer you go with it, the, the longer you're holding it. 
The longer you're holding it. And why? Uh-huh. What's the purpose? Mm -hmm. Um, this is my badge of honor. Nobody cares. Mm -mm. Nobody cares about your badge of mm -mm. honor. What you should care about is being as happy as you can mm -hmm. in this life as long as mm -hmm. you can breathe. Yeah. Because nobody cares. Yeah. They, the society does not give a hoot whether you have somebody or don't have somebody. Yeah. You should care. I need to love myself enough to make sure that I I live a happy life and I surround myself with happy people. The other thing is, look at your friends. If your friends are miserable, the people you hang around are miserable, that's where you are. Back to why if you're married, you surround yourself by married people, right? Exactly. If you're successful, you surround yourself by successful people. Um, like-minded surrounds themselves by like-minded people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so from that, I think we can agree that it's okay to hurt our daughters to a certain extent do not break our daughters uh yes you mm -hmm. need to learn how to hurt feelings it, it, hurt their feelings you let's have clarify to that hurt your in life you will be hurt uh-huh it's part uh, life is not easy uh-huh life is not a, a, a cookie it is what it is it's hard mm -hmm. for everybody hard from others some more than others because of how they they decide to deal with it yeah um and you can use it as a crutch and that's the other thing is don't use these experiences as a crutch to treat other people a certain way. Mm. Just learn that experience, know that happened to you, mm -hmm. and make sure that, hey, you keep an open mind when mm -hmm. you're dealing with other people. Mm -hmm. Or else you're gonna be that dream crusher. You're gonna yeah. be going around, oh, since I hurt, you hurt. So then yeah. everybody hurts. So yeah. what, 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 good is, what, what good is it? So just learn from your, learn from your, your lesson and say, moving forward, I won't make the same mistake twice. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you can do. Because ultimately, that's what we see a lot of. And that's what you hear a lot of people in the dating realm, yes. right? Especially yes. when people speak about themselves, how they themselves can admit open uh, out loud that, you know, I'm kind of doing the same thing in each relationship over and over again. And it's not serving me at all. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to do the hard work. Right. Which is working on yourself. That's the yeah. hardest thing to do. And you have, again, if you truly want to be happy, mm -hmm. you have to know what happiness is. Mm -hmm. You can't say I'm happy, but you'll know what happiness is. Mm -hmm. Money makes me happy. That means you're not happy. Yeah. My job makes me happy. Sure. You ain't happy. Yeah. Or oh, I'm a such and such. You ain't happy. If you tell me I make this amount of money, I'm I'm a CEO or CFO, and I can do this, this, and this. Those are the things. Do you mm -hmm. understand? All it takes is one stroke, mm -hmm. one accident. All, all that of changes. Done. Mm -hmm. So if you eliminate all of that. Then who are you? What's left? What are you? Yeah. If you can't tell me who you are, if I eliminate that from you, you need to sit back and you need to reevaluate yourself. Continue Look that man in the on. mirror, that woman in the mirror, and figure out. Take in Japanese culture, there's three masks. There's the mask you show the world. Mm -hmm. Take that off. There's the mask you show your family and your friends. Take that off. The third one is who you really are mm -hmm. that you show no one. A lot of people want to keep those other masks going because they really don't want to look at who they are. And and you have to look at who you are. Not what you think you are, but who you actually are. And once you look at that and you say, oh, I don't like this look, you have to make the change. So can I, I want to question the third mask mm -hmm. with who really sees the third mask. Only you. Only me? Only you. Why? Or because you're ashamed of who you really are. I feel like the spouse sees the third mask and you try your hardest to hide it from the spouse, mm -hmm. but the spouse always sees the third mask. Because sometimes you let it show, but you don't really want to take the entire mask. But you may see sides of the, of uh, the mask, but you won't really see the face because uh -huh. that means you have to be Again, when I first started off, I said, you're in a cell. And everybody's pretty much in their own prison. Mm -hmm. You have a key. You can't let yourself out, mm -hmm. but it's so easy to just be in that prison because you know it. Yeah. You know every corner, every angle. You know it. Yeah. So why would I want to go leave this place where I know? I know my faults. I know my issues. I know mm -hmm. all this. Mm -hmm. now, if I take that key and I open that door and I walk outside that prison, yeah. oh, my God, it's unknown. Yeah. I'm more scared than anything because yeah. I don't know what that is. But you know what that unknown is? That's how you find out who you really are. Yeah. Because that's how you work through all your issues. That's how you become a better person. That's how you become a better friend to to everybody. You become a good person to your relatives, to your family, to your, your kids, to people around you. you. You start to gravitate. Those people start to come to you because they start seeing you as the light. Like, and you don't understand. There's people that come talk to you. You're like, why are you talking to me? 
that happens to me all the time. People just tell me stuff that I'm like, you know what? I think I would take that to the grave with me. But they, they felt open enough to mm-hmm. tell me. To take that off their back. Mm-hmm. And, and I take it and I listen and I was like, okay. And, and from that point on, it's like, I can see them wherever. They're way from afar because this, you took the time to listen to me. But I took the time to listen to people myself. Because if I didn't take that time to listen to people who are unfortunately no longer here, mm-hmm. then I miss out on the Absolutely. Board, on the treasures that Absolutely. they gave me. The Those gems that they dropped on you. Yeah. Is it okay for us to wear these masks, Malcolm? Do you think? Uh, you have to wear them until you know yourself. And I say that because if you don't know yourself, you don't want nobody to see that. Because mm-hmm. that, that person that you, you see who you are without the first two masks on, mm-hmm. You may not like that person. Mm-hmm. That person may be disgusting to you mm-hmm. based on who that person is. It's up to you now to say, I don't like what I see. Now I need to go make a change. And it could take some time to change it. And then you'll feel comfortable because when you feel comfortable, and that's all part of the, the key and letting yourself out of your prison. Mm-hmm. When you're able to say, let me take off both these masks. Here's who I am. Mm-hmm. Accept me or not. Mm-hmm. You're free. Cause well, sometimes I kind of feel like the work mom, the work, the work Tamara is not the same as the mom Tamara is not the same as the nightlife Tamara, which is not the same as Mm-mm. the morning Tamara, right? And perhaps they're not the mask that I'm wearing, Mm-mm. but when I hear you reference the mask, it kind of makes me think about that. How some people. You know, you really do take on another persona um, depending on what you're going up against in life, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you know that you're going to be surrounded by a certain group of people, Mm -hmm. you approach that group of people way different than you would um, any other group of people. So if you're, you know, you're going to go do business with the military group of people, you would approach them different than you would um, a group from the world of academia, right? Exactly. Exactly. Audience is different. So you kind of, you kind of are different, Mm -hmm. right? You have to be. Uh Uh-huh. So what's the difference between the mask that you're referencing um, and just you showing up for the different occasions, I guess? The mask, the real you, Mm -hmm. is the person that you want everyone to love. Mm Mm-hmm. The other masks are there because people love that those and it, so by and by loving those masks, that you're telling yourself I love myself. Mm. But in actuality, they're seeing the mask; they're not seeing you. Mm. Because to you, if I take off these two masks, they may not like this person. Mm. They may not like who I so who you I really am. Almost feel like you must wear these masks. You have to because. Uh-huh. The other thing is you don't want to no one to really see who you are mm-hmm. first. And most people don't. Mm-hmm. You know, realistically, everybody wants you to be whoever they portray you to be. Mm-hmm. Whoever you want them to think you are. Because if you say, well, you know what? I really want to be nice all the time. I mm-hmm. really want to be an asshole. Right. And But you know, I can't be an asshole because... And, and why am I really an asshole? Because that goes back to answering that who you really are. So if you take both masks, why am I an asshole? Right. And then you have to go back and you got to do some digging. And remember I told you it starts when you're small and, and how you suck, you suck in things, how you are a sponge. Because you, I think the first five years, you kind of accept who the person is because they're basically taking, when you're five years old, you're taking all that you see mm-hmm. and from different sources. So that's why you got to be careful where you, you put your kids on. Kids right. at because right. they gravitate and pull that. So you have some slimy people you that you hang around, they're going to pull some of that from them because why? They're around them mm-hmm, and they're going to mm-hmm. suck it up. They don't know why, but they're kids. They're just get, gathering information. And that information may influence how they look at themselves without the mask. They don't know why. Like, I don't know why I think this way. Yeah. You really dig into it. It's probably because they met someone you know, along the way and saw that and it just stuck with them. And they say, I don't like, I don't like how this looks. I don't like, like the person I am. What don't you like about yourself? That's the other thing. Before you start changing who you are, mm-hmm. you have to look and say, okay, here's who I am and why am I this way? And if you answer all the questions, okay, boom. Now, do I want to change this? Then you have to look and say, do I really want to change? If it's really that bad, because mm-hmm. the other thing is, is it really that bad or you just perception-wise think it's bad? Yeah, yeah. It could be just 
perception wise, like, oh, I ain't really, really that bad. Mm -hmm. But you always keep a mask on because you really don't want everybody to see really who you are because you operate. We operate in a world that, unfortunately, you really can't show everybody who you truly are. Because if you yeah. do, some people take advantage of that because somebody has an agenda. You yeah. can take that and use you against yourself. Yeah. Because that's who you are. I'm a nice person. I'll come and use that against you. Mm -hmm. Then you're like, wow, you know, they really use me? Yeah, they use me, but they you're are. allowing it. Yeah. So you now have to say, okay, I can't have everybody see. I know, once you know who you are, mm -hmm. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I put these masks on because I need to just protect myself from mm -hmm. all the other stuff that's out there. Mm -hmm. But that's once you know who you are. Like I said, okay. once you know who you are, you're truly free. Okay. And you're okay. not free until that. So I can play dress up any way I want to when y'all know who I am. You know oh, who yeah. you are. It's all it's role play. Uh -huh. I'm playing this role. I'm playing that role. Uh -huh. I can be this. I can be that. Uh -huh. Because in actuality, I knew who I am. True. True. I'm not, I'm I like not. that. I like that. I like that. So, and that's where you start. And that's what everybody has to start with. Making sure you, and you talk to your kids. You, you talk to them. And you, you have a conversation with them. You talk to them. Hey, what's going on? What's mm -hmm. happening? Because you always want them to talk to you. You always want them to know, I can always go to mom. I yeah. always go to daddy. Because yeah. what you don't want to have is they get to an age, you know, like, Get out of my face. Leave me alone. Then they won't talk to you. And they're going to talk to somebody else that you wish they didn't talk to. Yes. And now you're going to have a problem. You know, what, what What? happened? You didn't talk to me, mom. Mm -hmm. You didn't talk to me. So I had to go over here. Mm -hmm. And this is this knucklehead. I told my son two rules. And to this day, he still uses it. Rule number one, your friends are stupid. Mm -hmm. Rule number two, refer back to rule number one. Mm -hmm. you, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Like the blind leading the blind. Exactly. Don't be silly. Yeah. Y'all exactly. don't know much. Yeah, yes. I really don't know much. No, you don't. And so that's why you got to be aware. You, and you got to, you always going to have the best for your kids. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the world, the world could care less about your kids. Mm -hmm. Your kids are statistic to them. They don't care. But to you, that's your future. That's the legacy. So you got to be there. You got to be aware of what's going on. They may, they may, oh, mom, you bugging me. Oh, I ain't bugging you. I got fun. What's going on? I can't have you involved with something and you can't talk to me. If you can't talk to me, there's a problem. Right. Because I'm that parent that you could talk to. I ain't going to tell you stupid, none of your answers, nothing's dumb or stupid, or get on my face and cuss you. No, I need to know what's going on because that way I can see some issues that's going on that may pop up. You can come to me and say, hey, you know what? This came up and I, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Have that real conversation with mm -hmm. them. And, and that helps them grow as a person, helps them you know, feel confident as a, as a person. And they need that confidence in this world today because this world today is trying to take everybody down to the bare minimum. So right. if you don't have any confidence in yourself, right. world can care less. Try this pill. Take this. Do that. Do this. And you know what? You'll be broke and you still got the same problem. Now you got two problems. So now you're going to have the issue that now develop from what you're doing. And then you still got this initial problem that you never even dealt with. You just keep hiding from it. All right. So, All right. So if I could take home, mm -hmm. right, and work on one thing, mm -hmm. right, what would it be? What should it be? It should be, if anything, is to find out who you are. But how do I start there? I want to. I, I want to start tonight, finding tonight? out who I am. Here's what what, you do. what can I do tonight to help me seek who I truly am, and to see if Tamara, am I really wearing a mask and know who I really am behind the mask that I put on? Because I know I wear masks all day, every day, depending on where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Do I really know who Tamara is? What is one action thing I can do tonight to help me nudge myself in the proper direction? Sit down and I suggest a journal. Okay. Because it's one thing talking to yourself about it and saying, hey, you know, no, write it down. Okay. Because it's going to force you to write down pros and cons. Mm -hmm. What do you love about yourself? Mm -hmm. What do you not like about yourself? And, all you, and you just off the top of your head, I don't like this. I don't like this. It has nothing to do with physically. It's everything with emotions and, and how you interact with things, how you act uh, with different things, write those down. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, pros, like it, cons. Okay, take the easiest con that you have and say, okay, maybe I have an attitude. How do I work on that? Mm -hmm. So now I got to figure out what what forces me to have an attitude. Mm -hmm. Then you have to start digging. Mm -hmm. Now it's like you, 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 you said the surface. Now I got to dig into it and find out why, why do I act or work or think this particular way you got to work on it i like that i like that i think we'll start there yeah we'll wrap it up with that gotcha starting with the journal looking at the man in the mirror let's start there got you always a pleasure 
Likewise.